Tonight we're talking on the whole armor of God. Ephesians chapter 6, reading from verse 10. Paul the Apostle was writing to the Christians at Ephesus. Now Ephesus was a terrible city because it was a place where they worshipped idols and where the devil had tormented and punished many people before the new Jesus Christ. And the Apostle Paul had been there and had ministered to many people, people there. And at this particular time, he was writing a letter of encouragement and teaching to them. And in the closing verses, there is what he says, Ephesians chapter 6, from verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, when people read this in America, Europe, Britain, you know, these uh, people who don't know where the devil is, what the devil does, and they feel that the computer will settle everything. You know, the hospital has answers to all problems. They don't understand these verses we're reading. And sometimes, you know, they come to Africa. They want to preach the gospel. And they read the New Testament, read the Old Testament. And, you know, they tell the people that God is wonderful. And then they get into the village and the villagers complain that there are problems. The witch doctors are troubling them. And the people with evil spirits are troubling them. Well, the white missionaries say, well, maybe that is just your thinking. Because, you know, to them, there is no witch, there is no wizard, no familiar spirit. Even the devil, you know, the devil is far, far away in the bottom of hell. Doesn't bother anybody. The only thing that bothers people, I mean to these uh, people who are white, is uh, malaria. And so when they come, they bring the Bible on one hand and aspirin on the other hand. You, you have a sin problem, they give you the gospel. You have a sickness problem, they give you aspirin. And then when the little gospel they give you, and the little aspirin or caffeinol that they give you will not solve the problem. You say something like, snake is walking on my body. They say, that's your imagination. And so eventually the people leave the church and they go back to their idols. They say, I won't allow the Yibo man to kill me. He doesn't know that Africa is different. But you know, we thank God that when you hold the Bible, the Bible is very plain. And the Bible says here that finally, my brothers and sisters, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. Because otherwise, if you don't put on the whole armor of God, you will not be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now the New Testament is very clear, as well as the Old Testament, as to what the devil tries to do. And the Bible is saying, put on the whole armor of God, so that whatever the devil tries to do against you, your husband, your wife, your children, you will be able to stand. During the day, during the night, you will be able to stand and no power of the devil will be able to touch you. Let me show you the reason why Paul the Apostle said, put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. What are the wiles of the devil? Numbers, that's in the Old Testament. Numbers chapter 22, verse 6. Come now therefore, I pray thee, cause me this people. For they are too mighty for me, for adventure I shall prevail, that, they may, that we might smite them, and that I may drive them out of the land. 
For I know, for I know, which means I what in old English, that he whom thou blessest is blessed, and he whom thou cursest is cursed. That's the words of the devil. You know, this man, Balak, called Balaam, he said, please, I, I know you have some mysterious power. But there is a group of people that have just come to town. They are passing by. Looking at them alone will make you afraid. So Balaam, please, whatever amount of money you'll get, come along. Come and curse these people. But you realize that these people had put on the whole armor of God. The protection of God was upon them. Because God had said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Never you go out of your home without the power of the blood of Jesus on you. Never you sleep at night without praying, calling the blessing of the blood of Jesus upon you. Because that is the mighty blood. It thunders with power from Calvary. And so Balak said, Come and help me defeat these people. Well, many of you know the story. Balaam came. But he tried and tried and tried and tried. Eventually, when he was not getting ahead, Balak said, What's the trouble with you? He said, You know the trouble with me is uh, this chapter 23. Chapter 23. Verse 23, surely there is no enchantment against Jacob. Neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, What has God wrought? Behold, the people shall rise up as a great lion, and lift up himself as a young lion, he shall not lie down until he eat of the prey and drink of the blood of the, of the slain. So, so Balaam told Balak, it's just impossible. Well, you say maybe that's just the Old Testament. Come and see the New Testament. The words of the devil. And the Bible is saying you put on the whole armor of God so that you will be able to stand against the words of the devil. In Luke chapter 13, Luke chapter 13, verse 11. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years, and was bowed together, and could in no wise lift up herself. You know, this woman had a life went to the synagogue, worshipped God, came out of the synagogue, learnt memory verse, read the Psalms, Psalm 23, Psalm 91, Psalm 51, read from the book of Isaiah, and went to synagogue and came out and just went in, in and out all the time. But you know that a spirit of infirmity just followed this woman, attached itself upon the woman. And for 18 long years, the woman was bowed down. If she went to the hospital and, you know, they made an X-ray, they will say there is nothing wrong with your spine at all. You are completely all right. But she will say, I'm not all right. You know, X-ray is physical. Evil spirit is spiritual. The doctors can touch your body and, you know, pinch you, put some light before you, and detect if there is anything physically wrong. But, uh, you know, if this woman went to the hospital, they would say, well, nothing is wrong with you. You are all right. But the woman couldn't sleep at night. The evil spirit bent her down, bowed her down. She was, you know, all bent over. And for 18 years, she was like that. And there was no help from anywhere. Until one day, she met a person that put on the whole armor of God. His name is Jesus Christ. He had the power of God. He prayed. At his sentence, the devil ran. He commanded. At his statement, the devil will fly away. And whatever he said, heaven will confirm it. 
And so this woman met Jesus Christ. When Jesus saw her, he called down to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. Now, I'll show you another place in the Bible later. If you don't have the whole armor of God on you, you can't get to a person that has a spirit of infirmity and say, Now, woman, thou art loosed. Not the spirit of infirmity will say, What an insult. You know that we are here and you talk like that and they slap you in the mouth. And you say, Deliver me, deliver me, look at my mouth. And the evil spirit will say, You don't try that next time. Don't you know that's insulting? We are here making our home in this woman for 18 years and you without the armor of God, without the power of God, you come and you say, get out there, shut up. And you will never pray. You will say, devil, I'm sorry to bother you. But you know, Jesus Christ, because of the whole armor of God, he just said, now woman, thou art loose and told the devil spirit to get out. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight, and she glorified God. Verse 16, Ought not this woman be the daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound? Lo, these eighteen years be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day. So you can see then how the Lord, could deliver such a woman. Now in Acts chapter 13. Acts 13. I'm reading there from verse 4. So they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost departed unto Seleucia. And from thence they sailed to Cyprus. You know, I'm, I'm showing you why you must put on the whole armor of God. Because you've seen in the case of Israel, as they were passing through the wilderness, Balak employed Balaam to come and harass, oppress, cause, defeat, destroy the children of Israel for him. But Balaam said, those people have the armor of God on, it's impossible to touch them. They are the apple of the eye of the Lord. It's impossible to touch them. They have the armor of God. I've shown you the case of a woman tormented, bowed down, 18 years. And how the Lord just in one sentence, one statement, one word of prayer, commanded and she became whole. And I'm showing you this again in chapter 13 of Acts for you to see. I've read to you verse 4. They have been sent forth by the Holy Ghost. For your information, there are different types of preachers. Some are sent by man, ordained, confirmed. But others are sent by the Holy Ghost. And you know, if you send a man to a village where the Jew worshippers are worshipping, and uh, you, the Holy Ghost has not sent the person, but to just send the person. When he gets to that village, he will not know what to do. I remember some years ago. I mean, if the Holy Ghost had not sent, there was nothing we could do at that time. But thank God the Holy Ghost has sent us. You know why in this um, city, Bendel State, and in that place they were worshipping idols. And there were two problems they had in that place. One, idols, two, women. And we got to this uh, particular place and the, this young boy was tormented by the devil, deformed by the devil. And uh, they wanted us to pray for this boy. And you know what the mother was doing? The mother was worshipping idols. There was, uh, you know, a pot they put upside down, they put some oil on it. And the woman, you know, with, who undressed herself was running around that pot. And they called us to pray. I said, no, we don't pray like that. Holy Ghost praying, it's not done just like that. I said, let the mother finish her worship. When she finishes, then let her call. Then we'll pray. 
So the father was waiting, the mother was waiting, and this child, you needed to see the child, the child was deformed, really battered and destroyed by the devil. But, uh, you know, when she was, when we were waiting, we just, you know, sat down and we were just uh, singing and, you know, whistling, just enjoying our time, waiting for the mother to finish idol, idol worshipping. So the mother finished, and uh, we called the mother and said, look at your child, look at what the devil has done. You worship him, you serve him, you give him oil, you give him money, you give him good. Look at what he has done for your child. And if you will forsake that idol, we are going to pray and this child is going to become well. Well, she said, if God will heal my child, I will forsake the idol. And we said, okay, stay there. And we told, uh, you know, the child to close their eyes. And in five minutes, we just said, in the name of Jesus, convince these people that idols are nothing. And in a twinkling of an eye, the child was healed. <laughs> and uh, immediately, that woman went and took that pot and threw it in the bush. <laughs> Destroyed the idol. We said, uh, how about you, the father? The father said, if the child is healed and the child is no more going to worship idol, the mother is not going to worship idol, I'm not going to be the black leg in the family alone worshiping idol. I forsake idol. And they all forsook idol. But you know, if the Holy Ghost did not send you, and you go to such a place, I mean, there's nothing you could do. But you see, in this verse 5, Acts 13, verse 5, and when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. And they had also John to their minister. And when they had gone through the Isle of Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bar Jesus, which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Palot, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. But Elamas the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Now what do you do when you go to a particular church and the people are not sent by the Holy Ghost? not sent by God and you are preaching and the sorcerers and people with familiar spirits they stay there and all you preach they take everything away from the minds of the people you pray there is no effect well you see if you are not sent by the Holy Ghost preaching is difficult praying becomes impossible but you know Paul was surprised but you know Paul came out of the church where they were fasting and praying waiting upon God and as the minister to the Lord and pastor the Holy Ghost said separate me Barnabas and Saul and for your information never touch those people if the Holy Ghost said separate me Barnabas and Saul they are going to do that word and so while Paul was preaching this man called um, uh, this man that was called um, the sorcerer Elamus he started, uh, you know, conjuring and doing whatever he, he wanted to do. So that the deputy will not be able to receive the word of God. Look at verse 9. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, O fool of all subtlety and all mischief, Thou child of the devil. You know, he said, put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand against the wiles of the devil. Now what will the devil try to do? Try to dissuade people from taking the word of God. O full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee. And thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun, for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness. And he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. 
You know, you'll think it's because of the testimony tonight. I'm reading all this. The Lord gave me this message while at home. That, you know, the Lord wants you. I didn't know that a testimony like that will be given. But that the Lord wants everybody coming here to be bold against the devil. To know that if you are a child of God, if the blood of Jesus is on you, that the devil cannot touch you. That the witches and the wizards cannot touch you. And you know, as I, as I looked at that passage and I you know, saw all these references, I was uh, saying, but God, why not let me talk to the people on healing? And the Lord said, no, just talk to the people on the fact that this is Nigeria, there are witches and wizards in Nigeria, but for anybody coming here, if you put on the whole armor of God, that no witch or no devil can touch you. And you know, when uh, that lady came and was giving that testimony, I said, God knows what he's doing. And you know tonight that there is no little child in Bagada. Every little child is a master of the devil. Yeah. And a master of witches and wizards. Yeah. And you know some people when they come like that and they hear us mention witch or mention wizard, they, they panic. They, say, oh, they don't know that those people are bad. Why don't you do your preaching and leave those people alone? Suppose they slap you. They can't do it. I said they can't do it. Because you know they always wrong. Or oh, at Ibada many years ago. And I was preaching. And I came to the point where I just wanted to talk to the witches and wizards. Whenever they are there, I know they are there. And I know what to do with them. And if our eyes meet, they roar. Because they know. So I said that morning that if you are a witch and you are here this morning, you either repent or run. If you repent, it will be good. If you can't repent, you'll run away. And after that message, somebody came to me and said, excuse me, sir. I said, yes. He said, will you forgive me? I said, I've never met you. What am I to forgive you for? <laughs> said, I'm sorry, but I'm a witch and I've been trying to do you harm. And I said, well, what's your name? She gave me the name. I said, have you ever been able to? She said, never. That we come this way, but we fall down. We come that way, we fall down. You know, they always fall before children of God. Yeah. And so you see, this one came and Paul was preaching. And he wanted to disturb Paul the apostle. And the Holy Ghost came on Paul and said, you child of the devil. And then he said, he'll be blind for a season. When the deputy saw that, immediately he believed. But I told you before, if you don't have the armor of God on you, don't just go out and, you know, in your yard and around you and say, You witch there, come out and let me fight you. You don't have the armor of God to say that you are in trouble. Acts chapter 19, from verse 11. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. Special miracles by the hands of Paul. So that from his body were brought unto the sick and cashed, so he prompts, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Now listen to me. The power of God is so powerful, so great, that you know when an handkerchief or apron touched the body of Paul. If they brought that handkerchief or apron near a person having evil spirits, the evil spirits will go away immediately. You know, if you are coming to this place, you have nothing to fear. You know, I'm told that, you know, some evil people, they can take your biro. When they take your biro, and then they return it, later your hand will be shaking. Now, if a child of God has been using a barrow and the person having evil spirits, if he touches that barrow, he will lose the power of evil spirits. Yeah. Or sometimes, you know, you, you'll be wearing your clothes and uh, you, you put your clothes outside after you have washed it. And then uh, a man of uh, evil power, juju or witch or wizard, will take uh, that maybe underwear or shirt or pair of trousers. And you don't know the word of God. You'll be crying, writing prayer requests. Hey, come and deliver me. They are taking my underwear away. Let them take it away. 
Once that clothes that touched your body, I'm, I'm talking if you're a child of God, if the blood of Jesus is on you, if you have the armor of God upon you, if you're a powerful person, that clothes has touched your body. If a witch touches it, he loses his power. If a man with evil speed touches it, he loses his power. And whenever they brought an handkerchief or apron that came in contact with the body of Paul, they brought it to a man having disease, that disease will go away. Evil spirits will go away. And in verse 13, then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them, which had evil spirits, the name of the Lord Jesus. You know some people who are not born again, not children of God. They wanted to do copy work. And we know how Paul does it. He will say, in the name of Jesus, come out. And we know how Paul will pray for the sick. He'll lay hands on them and say, now you devil, you disease, I command you, get out. And they wanted to copy. Like they wanted to do magic. So they went about, not born again. Not having the power of God upon them. Not putting on the whole armor of God. I mean, a, never, a man who never prays, who never fasts, who never seeks the face of God. You know, just went out and said, We adore you by the name of, by Jesus, whom Paul preaches. They can't say by Jesus our Savior. They were not saved. Not born again. They wanted to borrow Jesus from Paul. We adore you by Jesus, whom Paul preaches. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priests which did so, seven of them. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know. You know they know Jesus? I mean if you are really saved by that Jesus, the Jesus of, of Nazareth, the Jesus who rose from the dead and went to heaven, the Jesus who was crucified on the cross of Calvary, the Jesus who said, it is finished. I mean, if you know that Jesus, you have that Jesus, you are saved by that Jesus. They said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know. Oh yes, they know us. I mean, they've never met you, but they meet you on the, on the streets and they run away. They say, I know Jesus and I know that child of Jesus. I know Jesus and I know Paul, but who are you? You are not saved. You don't have the blood of Jesus on you. You don't have the armor of God upon you. And the man in whom the evil spirit was lived on them and overcame them and prevailed against them. So they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Don't try it. It's dangerous. You know, they, they watched Paul. And they didn't know what was the difference between them and Paul. This is the difference. Finally, my brethren. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Ephesians 6, 11. Put on the whole armor of God. That ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Will you be able to stand? Yes. If, if a witch comes across you, will you be able to stand? Yes. If you are sleeping at night and the witches, you know, parambulating, roaming about, knocking at your window, crying like a bird, and instead of sleeping, wasting her time, going around by your backyard, will you be able to stand? Yes. If in your office a man will waste a salary and go to a juju man somewhere and put your coal in paper and put it on your chair, will you be able to stand? Yes. If you have the armor of God upon you, nothing can destroy you. You know, they may, you, you go to the place and you, in the afternoon, lunch hour, and this man, this austerity period, they discover that you have been promoted in austerity period. And they say, what's the problem? Every time you go to Bagada, you get a promotion, spiritually, materially, and physically. And then they hate you. And because of that, they invite you for lunch in the afternoon. And, uh, you know, they buy the food and they put something inside it. And you don't know, but they don't know what you are. Greater is he that is in you than he that lives in the world. Before you eat in that public place where the people are smoking and drinking or whatever they want to do, and you just lay your hand on that food, you say, in the name of Jesus, purify this food, cleanse it, and make it to, you know, just bless my body. 
And then with the poison and the food and the water and everything, you swallow everything. And you know the man said, uh huh, I, I give him. He will die. He ate everything. The juju and the food and the water, just swallowed everything. And you will know that a bagada cannot help him now. You come the second day, your face is fresh. You come the second week, your face is fresh. He comes back to you and he says, take me to your church. Where you can't die. Where nobody can kill you. That's why the Bible says that you put on the whole armor of God so that you will be able to stand against the walls of the devil. Listen to me. In the afternoon, the devil will run away from you. In the night, if the devil comes, he'll fall flat on his face. Any time, any day, in the city, in the village, anywhere you are, the blessing of God will be with you. Because there is nothing that can touch you. Before I allow you to pray, look at uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28. I'm reading from verse 2. And all these blessings shall come on thee, and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall thou be in the city, blessed shall thou be in the field, blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, and the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Even your animal at home will be blessed. Your dog, your sheep, your goat, your chicken will be blessed. Blessed shall be the basket and thy store. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in. And, when, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses. And in all that thou settest thine hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou, the Lord, shall establish thee and holy people unto himself, as he has sworn unto thee. If thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God, and walk in his ways, and all the people of there shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee, the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give thee rain unto thy land in a season, and to bless all the work of thine hand, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. Amen. The Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. Amen. Thou shalt be above only. Thou shalt not be beneath, if that thou shalt hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day, to the right hand, or to the left hand, to go out of the gods to serve them. The blessing of the Lord is before you this day. If the devil has been troubling you, tormenting you, if the words of the devil has been, you know, coming upon you, today you can be totally free. Put on the whole armor of God. The word of God. Prayer in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus covering you. If you have all this on, no witch, no wizard. No evil spirit, no devil can touch you. Rise up and let's pray. And whatever problem you have, and you want it removed right now, can you just raise up your hand? I want all your eyes closed and your heads bowed. You have any problem and you're asking the Lord to just look upon you and solve that problem? Lay your hand on that place if it's bodily sickness, but trace up the other hand. For then Jesus name I come before you. I'm praying for all these people right now that whatever problems they are brought in today, that this world has piled in on them an attack of the enemy, an attack of the devil, 
whatever it is, I'm asking that you deliver them completely tonight in Jesus' name. That person that is having a problem in the head, I command that that problem will vanish away in Jesus' name. Now you devil tormenting that woman in the home, I command you that you remove your hand away from the home of that woman. And, you, and that woman is set free right now in Jesus' name. That thing like each on the body, like uh, you know, peppery sensation upon the body. I command you, get away in Jesus' name. The sensation of pepper and the scratching and the itching, I command you to come down right now in the name of Jesus. A person suffering from bad dreams. Such in a terrible way that you will not be able to sleep. I command the blessings of, of God upon you. And I'm asking God that from this night you will begin to sleep well in Jesus' name. The problems in the body, the sicknesses, the pains and all the things that are bothering these people. I command that they stop right now in Jesus' name. But I'm asking that the healing virtue of Jesus Christ will pass through the body of everyone. You will touch everyone. You will heal everyone. And perform your mighty miracles in Jesus' name. Whatever the problems are represented, as these people are raising up their hands, that's too much trouble I command you. Stop right now. And let everything in that stomach come into order right now in Jesus' name. That individual who cannot control the urinary system and just urinate anyhow. I'm commanding it comes into order in Jesus' name. That sharp pain in the head, I command you to stop right now. And I'm asking, oh Lord, that you stretch out your healing hand and heal all these people in Jesus' name. Uh, I'm praying especially that all people who are here this day, who just didn't know why they came, but they stumbled into this place, and they have any type of juju power on them, I command right now that that sin will become like water in Jesus' name. You have stepped into this miracle ground, and I command that you will not be able to use that power anymore. That every sin will stop in Jesus' name. And all people who have been under any curse, under any poisoning here, I command you be totally free in the name of Jesus. I sprinkle the blood of Jesus on everyone. That outside you are protected. In the home you are protected. On the way you are protected. In the office you are protected. In the vehicle you are protected. Your life is seed in God. And the devil will not be able to find you anymore. But I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I still want you to keep your heads bowed and your eyes closed. The person in this auditorium, that's the one to my left, that was healed of a sharp, terrible headache. Can you raise up your hand? To my left. Amen. 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 Now there was somebody there, something was walking around your body as I was praying. The thing went out, uh, you know, suddenly. Can you raise up your hand? Amen. God bless you. Amen. You had uh, stomach trouble and, you know, if you check up right now, the stomach trouble has gone. If you, can you raise up your hand if that's you? Amen. Amen. There's the one that had a problem in the right ear, and now the Lord says that thing is healed. Where are you? In Jesus' name. I'm told there's somebody there that you start on something before, and it was like poison, and you know that thing had affected your uh, feet before. But now if you check up, the effect of it has totally gone and you are totally free. If you are there, just check up. If you are there, can you raise up your hand? 
Amen. Who is the one that was having shot, uh, you know, terrible type of fear? You felt that fear underneath your chest. But now the Lord says he's taking it away. And right now you feel peaceful. I want your heads bowed and eyes closed. You know, there's a woman there, you, you're asking for help internally. You've been mischievous before, you've harmed some people before, and internally you want to repent and you're asking for help. I want all eyes closed. If you're there, I'll just pray for you and no evil will come upon you for the evil you have done in the past. I want all eyes closed because I just want to help. If you are there, can you just raise up your hand? Amen. Amen. Raise it up very well so I can see. I don't want anybody to talk now. You've done evil before. A woman in particular. Inside you are saying, I want to be delivered. I need help. I don't want to do it anymore. I'm telling you, if you'll just you know, raise up your hand now, I pray for you. No evil will happen to you. No evil. They could done before, it will not be visited on you. God will just have mercy upon you. Amen. Yes, I see the hand you wave. I see it. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, I come on behalf of this woman. On behalf of that other person raising up the hand over there. You are a God of mercy, a God of love, and a God of grace. You see, that woman has been having a type of a problem in her heart also that, you know, she's not been at peace. She's been haunted about. But you see, this very day, that thing that is haunting you about will stop in the name of Jesus. That smell that you have, you know, in the nose whenever you go about and it's, you know, it's just an omen of evil. That thing will stop even from now. Now I command you, devil, stop in Jesus' name. And I speak of the blood of Jesus upon that woman. As she surrenders herself, as she gives up herself, saying, I will no more do evil. I will not do, no more do evil to anybody. Oh Lord, I'm asking, forgive her in Jesus' name. Take all the power of evil away from her. Amen. Set her completely free. Amen. And let the peace of God enter into her right now in Jesus' name. Amen. That darkness and that evil spirit harassing her, hunting her about, I command the evil spirit, stop in Jesus' name. Amen. And the effects upon your children, I command those effects will be cleansed up in the name of Jesus. But I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And before you go, there's somebody there that you know that your belly is uh, having something inside, and I th you know it, and you've been wondering how that thing will come out. I want all eyes closed, and if that is you, there's a strange something you see inside your belly, and you want it to come out. Just raise up your hand wherever you are. You know it and you feel it. It's been a concern unto you. Inside your belly. You want it out, it will come out. Let's pray for them now. Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. You are the great miracle worker. Amen. And these things, uh, foreign bodies and foreign objects inside the bellies of these people, I command they will come out in Jesus' name. Amen. Your miraculous way. Bring them out in Jesus' name. Amen. Set them completely free. Amen. I thank you because I know you have answered. Amen. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the miracles you have performed. I'm asking that as all these people go out now, the devil will see them and tremble. Amen. Witches and wizards will see them and tremble. 
because there will be a heavenly light shining upon your head. The blood of Jesus will cover you. Your life will be hidden inside the blood of Jesus. And whoever touches you touches the apple of the eye of the Lord. The devil will not be able to snatch your life away. The Lord is going to protect you until all the promises of God are fulfilled upon you. For the mouth of the Lord has said so. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you. God bless you and good night.